Life's a game. The world's a stage. And we are merely role players where theatrical people play role playing games. I'm Matt Boothman, and I'm your compare for this main house production. Here on Merely Role Players, we improvise stories to entertain you and to entertain ourselves. And we use role playing games to keep the story going places even we can't see coming, because we're theatrical people. We're all about maximising the drama. This episode is part of our current main house production, Vigil Tailor Made. To tell this story, we're playing Monster of the Week, a role playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat. So please take your seats in the main house. Tonight's production is about to begin. Vigil, a Merely Role Player's main house production. Taylor Made, Act Two of Five. I'm Josh, and I play Ginny Greenteeth, the Spell Slinger. In the Dark Ages, soothsayer Ginny was chased from her village under suspicion of witchcraft. Now, many centuries later, she is the proud owner of a local tourist attraction and gift shop in Sheridan. My name's Chris McLennan, and I'm playing Ed Kincaid, the professional. He's a disgraced MI5 agent who's been kicked down to a basement to investigate reports of ghosts and little green men and other things that definitely don't exist. He just wants to file his report and go home. I'm Chris Buxy, and I play Calisterius Softbinding, the expert. Calisterius, or Cal to his friends, is a noted horror writer living in Cherrydale. While researching his latest novel, he discovered that monsters were real. He also discovered that fighting monsters is an excellent way to procrastinate when he really should be writing. Pete's been assigned to stake out the scion of an organised crime family. My family home has become unrecognisable and there are lots of people, all of whom are acting really strangely. (laughs) The attic is the place you're particularly interested in. Something's in the house with us, a spirit, a demon or something, I don't know. The doors, sometimes they stick and resist. Doesn't want us to leave. Mm. Shall we? Shall we stop being coy? Yes. About this character, give us what is this character's name and what is going through her head right now. My character's name is Peggy Taylor, and Peggy is thinking a lot of things down on this on this dark first floor landing. Yeah, yeah. There's obviously something going on. She's not been able to currently identify what it is. She really wants to get something back that's she left in the attic, and she can't get access at the moment. Very suspicious of the people that have come into the building. She does know and recognise Cal, possibly recognises Ginny, but doesn't know what's going on. And, and and also just what what are your feelings of sort of you've come home to this place, you know, this this house that has been home, and there are bits of the layout that you obviously recognise, and then there are these sort of extra walls and extra doors, and everything's changed. What's that doing? Pretty angry um, (laughs) that no one's bothered to tell her that those changes have happened. I would say Peggy is not regularly in touch with her family, but does get updates from them and expects to be in the loop with things. And she's also worried about her family because where are they, Mm -hmm. um, if not here? Uh, You can hear, by the way, uh, the sounds of the door slamming uh, upstairs and sort of urgent voices up in that flat. Is, I mean, the, the the obvious thing to do would be for Peggy to try and contact her family. You can do that, yeah. yeah. Oh, you also also still have the keys to the Airbnb flat. Yes. In your hand. I think she's going to try and ring her nan. What's Nana Taylor like? 
<laughs> Josh is shaking his head. You don't want to know what Nana Taylor's like. <laughs> She's the matriarch, head of the family. She is formidable, but she has a real soft spot for Peggy. Favourite grandchild. So, yeah, no one messes with her, but she is actually incredibly sweet and friendly and caring and does all the very classic grandmother things of baking and obviously she's very Mm. crafty great at sewing (laughs) but you don't cross her because bad things happen if you cross her Peggy dear where are you calling from? Um well Nana I'm calling from where I thought was your house Oh, you should have you should have called ahead, dear. There's a little bit of news on that front. Well, clearly, and no one's bothered to tell me. Yes, we're downsized a bit. We sold the place. What? You're living like a bungalow or something now? <laughs> Never catch me in a bungalow, dear. No, I know. We're off offered a pretty deal for the old place, and there weren't so many of us around anymore. We don't need quite such a big base. Right. Well, where are you then? Still in town, dear. A few streets away. I'll I'll text you the new address. Okay. Well, there's some weird stuff going on at the house, though. Is that you really just sold it because you were downsizing? Yes. Hmm. And do you know much about who you sold it to? Some redevelopment company said they were going to turn it into flats. Not super happy about it, dear, mind you. None of us are very happy about it, but it did give us that... It made us a little bit more liquid. And right. it's good to have some human currency in the bank account, along with all of the fey gold. Oh, yeah, well, you don't need to tell me that. Well, I'm glad you got a good deal for it, but it's a bit rubbish, and actually, I left a few bits here. Oh, did you? I did. Where did you leave them? Up top. On the attic? I thought we cleared the attic out. Well, I I put them away pretty careful, so you might not have found them. Obviously, I didn't eyeball the attic myself. Can you imagine me going up that ladder, dear? <laughs> I can, and it's very funny. Don't, don't you laugh at me, <laughs> Peggy Taylor. <laughs> Who'd you send up there, then, Dad? <laughs> yep. With his little head torch on. Yeah, that makes sense. But he loved it. What a lovely day, clearing out the attic. Yeah, it's made, it sounds like maybe he had a bit too much of a nice time and not enough of a careful look. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. I can give you the number of the uh, the people, the company, dear, if you want to arrange with them to get your things. I don't think that'll be necessary, but yeah, send me their details anyway in case they're useful. I'll do that. All right, well, I'll come round later for some cake then, shall I? Please do. We'd all love to see you. All right, Nana. I'll see you later. Good night, dear. Take care of yourself now. All right. Good night. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Good night. Bye, bye. Night, Peggy. Bye, love you, bye, bye. Ordering my grand now. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to roll investigate mystery? Yeah, yeah, I do. See if you get anything actually actionable out yes, of that. Yes, yeah, right. Let's give it a go. I'm going to try a different set of dice. <laughs> Plus oh, you're sharp. Okay, yeah, we've got eight and then... Plus sharp, which I have a uh, plus one for, so nine. Great. Well, I guess what is being concealed here? Mm-hmm. Almost immediately, your phone pings and you get a text from Nan with the phone number for the person, the rep at Voop Regeneration. Mm-hmm. And it's followed up about 30 seconds later with, just checked with your dad, inventory's short one thing, might still be in attic... Carved Rosebriar treasure chest, do not open. Okay. (laughs) Want to open it? (laughs) (laughs) Obviously, you're going to open it. So that's what's in the attic? Yes. That is what she... That's uh, that's missing from the family inventory, so it must have been left behind. Right. But that can be in addition to the thing I'm looking for? Yes. Right, sure. Because that wouldn't be on the family's inventory. No. Feels like that was quite a big oversight on my dad's part, really. Potentially. A a thing you should never open... (laughs) We forgot and left behind. No, we don't. I won't bother with that. Yeah, we'll yeah. Just leave that over there. Yeah. His head torch ran out. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. It's... Call it a day, I think. <laughs> yeah, his tea was ready, so he had to go downstairs. <laughs> the text was quite matter of fact, but you know your nan well enough to know that that matter of factness conceals uh, or is, is influenced by the sort of rage that is going to get your dad. Yeah, the brevity of talking it to reveals yeah. the rage. 
and also infers it's an instruction for me. Mm-hmm. It's not information. Great, now I've got another job to do. <laughs> Okay, at this point, I'd like to... Uh, Carl would like to investigate a mystery. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to use the dark past oh. move. So if you trawl through your memories for something relevant, you could roll plus weird. So plus two. Right. So yeah, you're while you're lying there sprawled, catching your breath, winded yeah. on, the, on the floor, in the wreckage of the coffee table, thinking about when, have <laughs> I, when might I have done something yeah. like this before? My back has been jogged and so has my memory. <laughs> Uh, so I have got 13 in total. Amazing. So on a 10 plus, Mm -hmm. ask two questions from the list. So when I've dealt with something like this before, Mm -hmm. so it says, well, I've dealt with this creature Mm -hmm. or one of its kind, what did I learn? And the next question will be, what black magic do I know that could help? (laughs) (laughs) So Cal, as you're lying there in the wreckage of the coffee table... Vision slightly blurred, looking up at the ceiling, catching up, catching your breath. There's something familiar about, not about the situation exactly, but about the sort of intent that you're feeling from whatever this is. It's already been said, Ginny said it out loud, it doesn't want us to leave. And you hear her struggling with the sash window. And as you're lying there, dazed, you think you hear... Just like a a distant whisper on the wind. Stay. The behaviour you're seeing from whatever this is. The house is admitting people, but then doesn't want them to... it, It shuts doors when they try to leave. It seems to be trying to keep people in, but seems to be giving them a hard time and a bad time while they're in here. There's just something about that sort of jealous hoarding feeling of what the house is doing that makes you think of the great worms of old who would sit atop great hordes of treasure or wrap themselves around whole villages and hamlets and take them as their own. You've not seen any evidence of a worm. The doors seem to be opening and closing by themselves. You didn't see anything influence that bulb bursting. But just something about the behaviour reminds you of that. And what you learned from that is the motivation of that kind of creature is to hoard, to own, to control, and to, once it's taken something, not to let it go. So maybe you almost feel like the house itself is behaving like one of the great worms of old, the great old dragons of the world. And what black magic do you know to deal with a worm? Well, the way that they dealt with them in the old stories that you've got uh, written down in the books, in the library annex, is to appease a great worm, to stop it from attacking the village and carrying off People willy-nilly required the sacrifice of a, a maiden from the village. Okay. Uh, I Well, Carl picks himself up, uh, dusts himself off. Ginny, there's something very familiar about this. Um, I, I'm getting a, a sort of an old worm vibe here. Uh, well, worm with an O or with a Y? Uh, oh, definitely with a Y. Uh, oh, no. Uh, this The way it's sort of, uh, you know, it's hoarding people in here. We're, we're let in. We're not allowed to leave. This just reminds me of those sort of old tales. Um, this sort of jealous guarding and hoarding of uh, uh, resources. Um, well, and if we think back to those old stories, uh, is, is there something... Could we make a sacrifice to um, appease it? Uh, well, I don't think we should go straight to sacrificing, should we? Surely there's got to be another way. Yes, I don't like the sound of that either. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll call that plan B. Why do um, we always go straight to blood magic, darling? There's other schools of magic out there. <laughs> uh, it's true, but, you know, stick with what you know. The Of course, the other option for fighting uh, dragons is to slay it, and Cal draws his <laughs> silver sword. Where have you been storing that? <laughs> I never leave home without this. I call it... Excal oh. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> the house ejects. Yeah. <laughs> you just <laughs> 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 
So, uh, yeah, I think those are options. Appease or slay. Could we not open a line of communication, perhaps, first? We could try and commune, try and read its thoughts. Because if there's a way of, um, of appeasing it through conversation and not through sacrifice, my love, then that might be a better way. Uh, yeah, I think that's more your area's expertise, Ginny. Um, I, as uh, as we've already seen, I'm not really a, that sort of a communicator. My, my worry, my darling, is that you and I are, are, um, are strong individuals. We've uh, faced foes together, but there's a lot of innocence in this building. Oh, and Dennis is here as well. There's a lot of innocence in this building that might be hurt if we if we confront it. We need to work out a way to uh, for, 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 for the innocence to be let go. Yes, you're right. We should make sure um, everyone's safe first before we uh, try and deal with this. Uh, perhaps uh, perhaps getting everyone out should be our, our first priority then. Yes, I agree. But before we do that, I, I just I just need a moment to commune because I feel we're going to be going up a lot against a lot of stresses <coughs> and I just need a moment to think. So, uh, Adrian, is, is there a quiet room I could perhaps go into just to collect my thoughts? Uh, you, you, uh, you head into the bedroom if you want, yeah? Thank you. Or the uh, bathroom? I'll go into the bedroom. <laughs> Uh, Ginny goes into the bedroom. Mm -hmm. She's got an emergency spliff (laughs) that she's going to light up, and I'm going to try and use my fortunes ability. Once per mystery, I get to roll plus weird, and if I get to potentially get some visions that can visions of the future that can help you later in the mystery. Yes, which will allow me to yeah have a useful object. Previously, Ginny's done this with hallucinogens, and now we're just doing it with general relaxance for this time. Uh, I think it's her mind. I think it's going to be needed. So let's do a little roll. So roll 2d6 and add 3 for my weird. Dice tower. 7, 10. Amazing. Total. I hold 3. Ginny goes and blazes up in the bedroom and uh, it'll be good for all of you later. <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> Kincaid, it's starting to look like Bellamy is just not interested in leaving this car. I think, like, as Bellamy just sort of continues speaking into his dictaphone with incredibly boring information, often no information for every ten minutes, Kincaid goes, right, well, that's me done, and he just opens the the, uh, the car door and steps out. What do you mean? Edward, what do you mean? Look, you've got your job to do, and I've got my job to do. It may not be glamorous, it may not be clever, but it's my job, and that's what I'm going to do. Don't walk away from this car, Edward. It really is more than your career is worth. My career isn't worth a damn to me, to be honest. I've been locked up here for God knows how long. If I lose that, what does it matter? On your own head, be it, I suppose. I can get the job done perfectly well without you. He slams the door while he's talking. (laughs) Peter's a right prick. (laughs) I'm going to walk up to, straight up to the door, I think. What do you do when you get to the front door? The thing that no one does, which is actually just to see if it's open. And you can just open. <laughs> <laughs> so it does have, a, you know, it's got the intercom with the sort of the automatic unlock. But it also does have a big doorknob. And you turn the doorknob and the front door of the house opens for you. I pick up the fire extinguisher and I put it sideways yep. <laughs> in the door, like lying down. Yeah. So that slamming the door can shut it because he, he's been... In his reclined position, just mm-hmm. thinking about that and going, if you need to move a fire extinguisher out of the way of a door, you don't just keep slamming the door on it until it goes away, do you? <laughs> you move it. You think something's up. So he's, he's lied that down. He's, he's, he's heading in. You're in the, the ground floor hallway. You can see the stairs leading up into darkness. You can probably hear a bit of movement in the darkness on the first floor landing as well as Peggy is. In fact, maybe even the tail end of the conversation or Peggy's phone pinging as those texts come in. Takes a little like, pen flashlight out of his pocket. Let's look around to see if there's any movement on the floor he's on and then heads towards sound of movement. How strapped is uh, Kincaid in this moment? What are you, what are you packing? <laughs> just just, just side up. The, the rest lives in the Morris. <laughs> There definitely is somebody in the numbered ground floor flat. You can hear them moving around. But he saw the... Dennis come to the window, didn't he? You saw so... Dennis come to the window on the first floor, yes. Okay, on the first floor, okay. Yeah, and I think he's more concerned about the moving around on the landing, because that's mm. who probably shouldn't be here. So I think probably Kincaid arrives on that first floor landing just as the door to the Airbnb is closing behind Peggy. All right, hold up. Does it continue to close or do I? 
Peggy's making no effort to allow you in, but if you get to the door quick enough... Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll run like he's running for a lift. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> foot in the door. Yeah, so, sorry, sorry, buddy. Have you seen a couple of folks come through here? Mm-hmm. well to looking fellow and a... I know, a woman. Hag-like. I mean, I wasn't going to go that far, but... <laughs> well, yeah. I have, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that'll probably be the one. Yeah, they're upstairs. All right. This... Flat is, uh, it has power, that it has light in here. It's a self-contained flat, so it has a little lounge area attached to a, you know, an ki- open plan kitchen lounge sort of area um, and a bathroom within the flat as well. Peggy, what was, what was this room when you lived here? The kitchen and the bathroom weren't here. No, they, no. they been added. I think it would have been a, a nice big bedroom. Whose bedroom? Uh, one of my siblings. Shared by two boys. Like everywhere, it has that horrible wallpaper. And other than that, it's been turned into this sort of zero personality flat. I don't really care that Kincaid's there, but I'm just looking around for something like a little footstool or ladder or something that I can do. Do you recognise him at this point? I don't think I've even looked at him. Kincaid doesn't hugely care that you're there either. That's Pete Bellamy's job for people (laughs) to do it that way. He's worried about whatever you're here for, because it's always something <laughs> with you. There's a bucket under the sink. Mm-hmm. Is there a mop as well? There isn't a mop. You think the mop might be maybe in the understairs cupboard or that... Utility room. Utility room, mm. potentially. Would the bucket be big enough for me to then... If you can get the mop as well, standing on the bucket, yeah. you could reach the yeah. trap door with the mop. Oh, so I'm going to go back downstairs yeah. to get the mop. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to bustle around then. I'll uh-huh. grab the bucket and I'm Great. heading out of the flat. Okay, um, the door sticks and won't let you I leave. I wondered if that might happen. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> In fact, as you were bustling around under the sink to find the mop bucket, you can see that in the sink, and this may be the last straw that led the couple to leave, the sink is full of, or like spattered with awful, really dark green shot through with more like lime green just gunk okay. that has come out of the tap. It's pretty grim. Peggy's going to properly like, put her shoulder to, to the door to try and force it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it opens inwards. Oh, it opens inwards. Pull. In that case, she's just going to pull really hard with both hands. <laughs> uh, roll plus cool, please. Okay. How cool is Peggy? Mm, plus one cool. Okay. Oh, slightly cool. <laughs> <laughs> Above average cool. Ah, 11. The door resists. Uh-huh. It puts up a fight, but you're able to yank it open long enough to leave I... with your bucket. Peggy okay, goes straight out the door, straight downstairs, slip the mop. Kincaid, are you slipping out the door as well, or are you letting it shut? I didn't know I went all the way in. To my mind, yeah. I'd already to yeah. go, thanks, and headed yeah. upstairs oh, to the... Okay, so yeah, Peggy manages to yank the door open, heads out, heads downstairs. You were heading to the, looking for the utility room or the understairs yeah. cupboard, potentially. Yeah, which are on the same level. They are on the, the they're both on the ground floor. Well, Kincaid was heading up. Yep. To uh, Adrian's sealed flat, where these two are. The more I think, fast, isn't <laughs> yeah, it really is. the more I think about it, 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 on that point, the more I think Kincaid doesn't necessarily know that you were the person he was meant to be staking out. You went into the house before. <laughs> oh he no, you, you do. She was in the briefing packet. You've been you've been told who you were after. Yeah, okay. who you were meant to be surveilling. <laughs> so yeah, head up. Presumably, there's more than one flat. On that floor. Or yes, on that there's floor. there's two numbered flat doors on this floor and uh, a bathroom and a kitchen and an airing cupboard. At this point, I just, rather than going door knocking, I'm just going to... Cal? You up here? Ed? Ed, is that you? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. We've, we've got some weird stuff going on here. Do you have a gun with you? <laughs> Do you have it? <laughs> yes, yeah, I do have a gun with me. Yeah. I love that there's no pleasant twist. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Do you have a gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah do I do have a gun with me because I saw you were here and thought, oh, I'll need that. Excellent. Do you think it could reasonably kill a dragon? <laughs> he, 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 gets, he gets the gun out the holster, sort of looks at it. How big is the dragon? Uh, yet to be determined. <laughs> I'm going with no. <laughs> okay, well... It, I'll have to bring the Morris round. <laughs> it's still good that you're here. Uh, can you help us try and get this door open? Not necessarily just... with the gun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'm scared that was there. Yeah, it just tries the door. The door opens. I thought it might. 
He just sees Cal and just <laughs> shrugs. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Uh, don't let it close. Doors are letting people in in this house. They're not letting people out. Cal goes and grabs the, the wreckage of the coffee table yeah. and drags it in to sort of what wedge the, the door open. And, and the as, you're, as you're doing that, the the door doesn't have an automatic door closer on it, but it's trying to close as if it does. It has that sort of pressure to it. But Cal wedges some coffee table debris in there. What about the French lads? Oh, uh, I think they had to force their way out. It, if anything, it sounds like this is getting worse. I'm getting a real sort of hoardy, dragony, old worm vibe from all this. Uh, I, I don't quite know how that works in relation to there being an actual dragon or to a dragon possessing a house, but... So, uh, hold, hold up. You're getting a worm vibe. Yeah, that's worm with a Y. I mean, it doesn't explain anything better. <laughs> well, we're not quite on the explanation phase. We're, we're still on the <laughs> still on the trying to stay alive, uh, oh, coming up with a plan sort of phase. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> Adrian pipes up. Mm-hmm. Um, it might just be because there's more people in here than before, but does anyone else get the feeling that the room's getting smaller? Um, do we get the feeling that the room's getting smaller? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, if you pay attention, uh, could you roll uh, Read a Bad Situation? Uh, okay. This is plus sharp. Okay. Any, anybody in the room can do this. I was say, as a tactical Doesn't genius. Do, yeah. Yep, go on, then you, you do it. Yeah, haven't had a, an Ed roll yet, have we? Uh, yeah. That is 11. Yeah, okay, so you get three questions from Read a Bad Situation. And I'll give you for free that, yes, <laughs> one of the walls is closing in and making this room that you're in all in smaller. Visibly, like, so while looking at it... You now that you pay it. attention yeah. to it, you can see it moving, yeah. Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? No, you uh, originally hadn't noticed that the wall was closing in, uh, but you da- now do notice that's that. The, the only, it's not like... And also spikes. <laughs> uh, what's my best way out? So, I, I mean, you've got the door wedged open now, so the door is the best way out. As Ed is casing the room and just looking at exits, yeah. you've obviously got the door you just came in through, which is wedged and you can get out through. You clock the window as well, and... It's difficult to tell from just looking at it, but there's something kind of odd about the glass. It's almost like it's there's a, a a slight ripple to it, like it's not quite flat, like you'd expect kind of a modern installed window to be. And there's not a lot of light filtering through from outside, but the the overhead light in the room reflecting off the window, it reflects with a slight greenish tint. Okay. Kind of check back out the door and see if the hallway looks really like it did when I was in it just now. It looks pretty much the same, still dark though. I mean, I suggest we vacate. <laughs> yeah, uh, Cal is going to shout, uh, Ginny, I think it might be time to go. The walls are closing in. Ginny uh, enters into the main room mm-hmm. from the bedroom, uh, sees Ed and goes, oh fuck, it's the feds! <laughs> and quickly runs to the bathroom to flush her stash down the toilet uh, and, and then returns to the main room. Oh, oh. Uh, Adri- Adrian's flat doesn't have a bathroom in it. You'd have to go out in, oh. onto the landing to the shared bathroom. Uh, okay, well then she just hides it in uh, underneath Adrian's <laughs> mattress in her bedroom and comes back, oh hello Edward, didn't <laughs> expect to see you here. Uh, how have you been? Nice gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. Fine. I mean, what are, what are you what are you doing here? Oh, just here to visit my friend Adrian and to deal with the fact that we're in a house where it appears that the walls are closing in. Listen, you need to organise an evacuation. We have to get all of the innocents out of out of here before we deal with the worm. All right. Well, you stay here then, and I'll get the rest of them. Out. Please. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Ask for Adriana to follow at least. And, yep. Uh, Adrian needs needs no, no encouragement. Encourage she doesn't know you're a total stranger, but you you seem competent. You like you seem to be in contact with these two, and she wants help getting out of here. So yeah. And uh, he has a gun. And yeah. he has a gun. <laughs> do you do you know who else is still in the building, or do we have to go door knocking? I think everyone's in. I heard music coming from Ronnie and Polly's next door. Um, I know Dennis is in. Uh, there's um, there's a French couple staying in the Airbnb uh, on the same floor as Dennis, and then there's Wendy on the ground floor. Yeah, let the French lot out. Don't know why. Oh, they're gone. Unless there's another lot. No, no, that's good. That's good. I'm glad they. I'm glad they got out. They're you know the strangers. They're not part of this. Whatever this is. Cal, weird question. Mm-hmm. What type of magic is green? Ooh, okay. <laughs> what what colour is Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> uh, would I know what type of magic is green? 
I think this might be an investigator mystery sort of thing. Yeah, yeah it could be. I will give you a competent answer in yeah. one moment. Um, Twelve. Great, okay. Could what sort of creature is it arguably be what sort of magic is it? Uh, it actually, what sort of creature is it might be a better phrasing Okay, for this. Yeah, there's just something off about the light. Like there's green behind everything. In the windows, in the lights, which are on, which is weird. So, Cal, thinking about that and thinking about what that, that thought that you had earlier about this feels like worm behaviour and worm attitude, but it feels like the house is doing it. Mm-hmm. Kincaid draws your attention to the light and to the reflection of the light in the window. Talking about green and thinking about that weird, awful green wallpaper. Why would anybody choose mm-hmm. that design? And you start to see the situation that you're in which is that there is a worm woven through the walls of this house. All right, lovies. It's me, Matt, your compare. I hope you enjoyed Act 2 of Vigil, tailor-made. There will now be an interval of two weeks before we raise the curtain again for Act 3. Stay tuned now for the credits and the epilogue, but first let me just direct you to the section of your programme with the community notices. In our story right now, Sheridan is still without power. It's almost like it's devolving to an earlier time. What if there was another show where that was a bit more literally the case? Still Monster of the Week, but set before the modern day. What? That show exists. It's called The Thorn Files. It's not set in a time before electricity, but it is set in an earlier time than our show. 1952. Here they are to explain their show a little bit better than I am. Hello, this is Annabelle Thorne, current head of Thorne Investigations, a paranormal investigations company set up in Edinburgh. I'm here to tell you today that monsters are real, and have been real for centuries, only they've been hiding. We don't understand why they're coming into the light now, but if you see anything, if you hear anything that makes you think you're in contact with one, tell us. We can help. I have a few agents in the field just now, Evangeline Lane Fox, Peter Anderson, Vera Bright, and for better or worse, my niece, Tabitha. Don't hesitate to tell us. If you do, you might not get another chance. The Thorn Files podcast is a Monster of the Week actual play podcast with new episodes coming out every other Friday. If you're a fan of horror, mysteries, and shenanigans, why don't you come and give us a listen at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and pretty much everywhere else you can get podcasts. Be ready to be scared. We were playing Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat Productions. You can find Monster of the Week at genericgames.co.nz. Merely Role Players is a Foggy Outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on.
the witch with no familiar, mourns day and night, refuses to take care of herself. There are provisions plenty in the glade. There are vegetables, herbs, edible fungi, birds to shoot. Every so often, a party of hunters from outside the glade arrives to bring meat and simple clothing to replace what is wearing away. The witch will not take care of herself. Does the hunter do it for her? Come on, just have one more spoonful. Here comes the aeroplane. Broom. Well done. Would you like some more porridge? A little bit more? Save it for yourself. I'm sated. Look, you've had one spoonful of porridge. You can't be sated. I don't think this place will allow us to starve. You may as well ignore me. I've tried. I've tried everything. But you, you you keep sighing in the corner constantly. Like there's only so much a man could ignore. Sighing. And Cameron is bristling with weapons. He puts them all down. So you, you, you came to this place with a rifle and a shotgun. That's true. Have you acquired others since? And how are you taking care of those? Uh, I think he's just kept the two guns. I don't, I don't think he's picked up anything new. And I feel like he can just maintain them. And there seems to be a constant supply of ammo <laughs> in a cupboard. <laughs> that he doesn't need to use in anything. There's nothing to kill or fight. But it just seems to be there. So he's looking after his stuff. Anyway, he takes them off, which he's been wearing pretty much constantly for how long Cameron's been there. So he takes them off. And he sits down opposite Clarissa, which maybe is the first time he's actually tried to just talk to her. I know you've had a hard time. We've all had a hard time. Everyone's had a hard time. But things get better. Right? Isn't that what everyone says? Things will get better. So talk to me, Clarissa. How can I help? I shall try to make you understand the the weight of what is upon me. It is not I'm not only in mourning for Milton, my other half. An awful was, other half, by the way. Who was with me my entire life and was ripped unceremoniously from me. I had no chance to say goodbye. I felt his pain as he burned. Hang on, wasn't he trying to enslave a lot of people? Trying to, like, capture my friend? The project. Our project. It's not only that I've lost him. I failed. We have failed in our project. That is um, above all what I mourn for. Because you say things get better. Without what we were doing, things will get a lot worse for all in England, for all in the mortal realm. We were a bullock against terrible things, terrible things which will now leak through. We have failed all of England, perhaps doomed all our countrymen in our failure. Do you see why I say you should cast me aside? Well, if anything, Clarissa, we to keep you about. There might be a different way to solve this problem. Maybe not enslave little uh, silly wizard boys and girls who wants to have a nice time on a train. Not uh, not the little gnomy fairy things that you had typing away. Maybe there's a different way. A different way to look at things. And if some nasty, big, horrible thing comes along, that's why people like me. I'm here. I kill big, nasty, horrible things for a living. That's what I do. I can protect people. Me and my friends, we've got that covered. You need to come up with a different way of shielding us. And I reckon, you know what, Clarissa? You've got it, kiddo. I believe in you. Now, I might be able to get you another little ghost friend. Would you like another ghost friend? Another awful person? I don't, I don't know if I could share myself that way again after losing one. But perhaps... There is some hope in what you say. Perhaps there is. Perhaps there are other 
ways, perhaps not all is lost. Yeah, that's the way. That's more like it. I've there got... are books here, but I need others. The hunters that you that bring the 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 meat that bring the cloth. Yeah. If you could offer them something in in return in trade, perhaps they could bring us knowledge from beyond the ring. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So knowledge. Knowledge is power, right? Tomes. Grimoires. This is a land of magic. Where are we? Where where are we? Cannot say for sure without my counterpart, but I have travelled the realms. What little we can see of this land has the hallmarks of Albion. Right. If we could go further than the glade, it would be easier to determine for sure we would be sure to stumble across a, a fairy tale castle or right. giants right. striding the land or some other dragons. mark. Dragons, of course. Yes, great worms. Worms. Simply a... a I, I forget okay. sometimes that you are of a, a different time. I've only observed your life through the, the writings that were brought to me by my project... How old are you? How old? How old? I have spent a long time in realms other than England. I don't believe my age can be reckoned in ways that you would be familiar with. Years. Give me years. I can do years. I left England for other realms perhaps 200 years before your time. Well... I've got to say it, Clarissa. You're looking good for your age. This is Worm with a Y. Yeah. <laughs> yep, thank you. <laughs> Worm. Yep. <laughs> Worm. Foggy Outline. Undivide your world.